So I never thought I'd be saying this, but we actually have a new balance patch coming out for Diablo 2 after about two decades. And I'm especially excited for all the underplayed builds that will become viable for Season 1. And so in today's video, I'm going to cover 6 of those builds that I'm most excited to try out. And so let's get started. And so with that, starting out at number 6, and by the way, this list is sort of ordered by viability in my opinion, and also my sort of intent and hype for the actual spec. And so by the way, I might not be the foremost expert on some of these specs, such as what we have right now, the Boazon, for which you can see that I've specced into Immolation Arrow and try to max out all of the synergies and put the rest of my points into straight for the most part and the gear itself is also not super optimized although i do have a few decent pieces like my g face uh, more travelers high lords but i'm actually using a Bereza for my weapon and i do have several weapon choices available on the ptr such as the insight um, hydra bow which is a new well not a new rune word but newly available for bows so that's really cool for um, amazons especially when you're leveling up giving you another sort of viable option in between before you get to your faith rune word or your sort of end game win force Plus, I also want to test out the build without endgame GG gear just to see how viable the build can be and how far this gear can take me. And so having tested out Immolation Arrow with Explosive Arrow and Strafe, as well as the Freezing Arrow variant while also maxing Strafe for the Cold build, I have to say that, well first of all, maybe I don't have enough pierce on my gear, so that could probably help, especially when clearing out cows. Um, and also, um, there are other parts of my gear that obviously have not been optimized and neither was my talent build. For example, if I had more pierce and um, a few more points into multi-shot, I could probably do cows a lot easier while saving strafe for when there are fewer monsters because strafe is sort of a semi-single target skill, I just found out because I really was not super well versed in the Boazon. And so for this build, it is significantly improved um, in this patch given that the mana cost for some of the elemental arrows have been decreased, so that does feel a lot better. And also, like I said before, there are now sort of in-between options for viability uh, for the Boazon without having to rely on getting your Wind Force or Faith Rune Word, both of which are pretty expensive. For example, you can just make an Insight Bow, which is the Rune Word, which will also help your mana regeneration and uh, can be a cheap source of damage, uh, a damaging weapon. And next, the buffs to Strafe are obviously very welcome as well, although Multi-Shot could actually still be a little bit better in like huge monster packs in the cow level, for example, although um, I probably needed more Pierce in my build anyway. But um, anyhow, with the Boazon overall, I think it's viable, but probably could use a little bit of numbers tuning especially with the elemental arrows but um it definitely feels a lot better to play now and this is the ptr right so they could definitely still potentially buff her a little bit more and uh, if they do so i think it'll be in a very good place and now moving on to spec number five on our list and this one could also use some potential tuning and uh, by the way this is what the ptr is for right so for people to like test things out and for blizzard to see whether or not there's like additional tuning to be made so there's definitely potential for some of these uh, specs to be tweaked additionally to what they've already announced but anyhow here we have the martial arts assassin definitely one of the specs that received the most number of quality of life changes and not only that but straight up buffs to the spec the most significant being that your charges from your charge up skills don't actually get expended fully when you use a finisher so that each finisher actually only uses uh, one charge per cast so that you can actually charge up three charges for example and then use three finishers in a row to unleash your three separate charges. And for my build here and again this might not be optimized but I've actually maxed out Phoenix Strike along with some of his synergies focusing on the Chaos Ice Bolts so the cold uh, version and then I also maxed out Claw Mastery and put a lot of the points into the one point wonders like Venom and Shadow Master and um, I didn't put any points into the trap tree. And for my gear, it's probably not optimal as well, but it's also what the PTR offers. It doesn't give you that many pieces that you can work with. So my weapons are pretty crappy, but I do have some pretty decent pieces elsewhere, like Dracul's Grasp and War Travelers and things like that. Um, and anyway, um, my build actually functions pretty decently um, like this. Uh, by the way, for my finisher, for my talent build, I didn't max out Dragon Claw. I believe that's the finisher I'm prioritizing, but you could definitely go for like this kicks in version of it. Um, but I'm using Dragon Claws because of dual wielding claws and I just wanted to try it out and if you wanted more single target damage you could probably max out dragon claw as well for significantly higher single target versus AoE damage and upon testing out the build with Phoenix Strike it does feel okay although my clear speed probably isn't as good compared to like a sorceress or even a hammerdin of course uh, but it does feel manageable uh, but one thing is uh, maybe I don't have enough skill for this but managing charges um, with your charge up skills is still quite difficult 
uh, that is to see the actual three charges or that you do have three charges that are ready because um, without zooming in or like some kind of add-on or something to track your charges it's still somewhat hard to see so it's still not optimal in that way but in the hands of a more practiced player and perhaps with a few more tweaks to the numbers especially to some of the elemental skills I believe that the martial arts assassin is definitely a spec to look at not to mention how fun it can actually be in my opinion uh, to play. And speaking of fun, here's a spec I've been dying to want to be good for the longest time and that is the Foden or Fist of Heaven's Paladin where as you can see here, um, it's pretty easy to spec out and you'll have a lot of extra points to put into whatever you want so you want to max Fist of the Heavens um, and Holy Shock for the synergy to the lightning damage and if you want some extra Holy Bolt damage or Holy damage if you're farming undead areas and there actually is a new super viable new undead heavy area in the Stony Tomb in Act 2 that recently got buffed to level 85 monster level so I'm going to cover that in more depth later on. Um, it's going to probably be viable to put some points into the Holy Bolt synergy to boost your Holy Bolt damage if you want to clear that place out super efficient. And of course you want to max Conviction Aura as well not only because it boosts your elemental damage but also you can break lightning immunes making your Paladin essentially uh, able to farm anywhere in the game. And as for gear, I'm just wearing pretty standard caster fare with a Herald of Zacharoon because that's what's offered in the PTR. Although you could use a Spirit Shield as well, that's perfectly fine. But here somewhat experimentally, I'm using a Barbarian Mercenary because of the taunt on a bending well. I thought that having a melee taunter could be really interesting and it actually worked out really well as you'll see from my gameplay demo in just a bit. And now the main reason that Face of the Heavens is now more viable or rather much more viable is that besides the Holy Bolt damage buffs, it's that Fist of the Heavens now has a 0.4 second cooldown making it super spammable and um, I think in PvP people have to be really scared of these types of Paladins unless they make you know some type of specific PvP tuning. But Fist of the Heavens as you can see, you can pretty much machine gun things down pretty fast although it's not really a, um, you know, it's still not a great AoE spell if you're farming say cows or whatever anywhere without undead enemies but anywhere with undead enemies um, you're pretty much going to be able to clear super efficiently um, and even places that don't have you know as many undead your fist of heaven still does decently especially since you have again that conviction aura helping you reduce immunities I mean or reduce resistances and also break lightning immunities and by the way the stony tomb here is the new um, zone that's been buffed up significantly it's right out of town um, of loot golain in act 2 you can just walk out and find the entrance here it's got two levels it's got a super chest at the end and it's filled with undead lots of undead um, as well as no fire immunes, although that's not really relevant to the uh, Fist of the Heavens Paladin here. Um, but if you're planning on running any fire build, like the Fire Druid, sort of a preview to one of my next specs I'm going to cover, um, like a Fire Druid or a Fire Sorceress or even a Fire Amazon Assassin, right? Trap Fire Assassins got buffed too. Um, the Stony Tombs is a great place to farm because it very, very rarely comes with fire immunes. It's kind of like the, um, what's it called? Ancient Tunnels in Act 2 as well. And it could actually even be better than the Ancient Totals because it's got the same monster level now at level 85. And speaking of fire builds, the Fire Druid is probably one of the most, if not the most, hyped up builds for Season 1 because of the extremely significant buffs that it received, probably more so than the Martial Arts um, Assassin because previously with the fire skills or any fire spell that the Druid has besides like Fire Claws, um, they all shared like a cooldown and had a very long cooldown making you pretty much not able to uh, not only being able to only spam one skill at a time besides Armageddon which kind of falls in the background but um, you can't really switch around and rotate to different spells sort of wasting talent points in that way although you are building up synergies the damage wasn't good enough um, but now not only can you um, do more damage with the skills as they have improved the synergies and even the physical components of some of the skills like Armageddon so you are doing both physical and fire damage but now because none of these skills with casting blades now share a cooldown down, you can literally spam all your skills separately um, and just keep you know rot like a rotation essentially uh, casting Armageddon followed by Volcano followed by like Molten Boulder followed by uh, Fissure followed by Firestorm wow that's a lot of spells you can literally rotate through all these spells and not have them sort of clip into each other with their cooldowns 
Now as for skills, it's actually very straightforward. You just basically go into Armageddon, max it out, max out Volcano, uh, max out Fissure, and then Molten Boulder, and then put the rest of the points into Firestorm. Or you could prioritize perhaps Firestorm over one of the other synergies to you know Volcano or Armageddon. But I prefer the physical components, so I actually uh, prioritize those skills as opposed to Firestorm. And then I also just have a one point wonder into Grizzly, Summon Grizzly, although that's completely optional. I just sort of wanted to test out these summoning improvements as well so um, that's another uh, area of the druid that's been buffed right so I just wanted to sort of test it out and the grizzly does seem pretty tanky um, although I'm not really sure how much damage it's actually doing and by the way another sort of cool indirect buff to the fire druid and basically any fire spec is the flickering flame helm rune wood which is relatively cheap yet offers significant uh, damage to any fire spec and besides that, your standard caster gear will suffice, although I'm probably not using the optimized versions, I'm using the obe obedience staff, uh, rune word, that's probably a lot better for source sources because you can actually spawn source of skills on the base of the item, so you would probably be better off using like a hodo spirit combo for this. And so with that, I do believe that the fire druid will likely be a super popular and justified, right, a very powerful build for season 1, although I personally might not actually play it just because if um, it becomes a flavor of the month. Um, Druid gear and anything associated with it might actually become more expensive and things like that. Um, and I personally like going for more unorthodox starts to the ladder, although uh, playing a sorceress would probably not be the most you know, unorthodox thing to do. Um, or I might do an assassin, but with that, let's now get into my favorite class and you know, probably still the class I'll probably most likely start with in Season 1 just because of how much I like it, the sorceress. And I actually have two builds, or more than two builds to share with you guys um, that have sort of been buffed as well. Alright, so the first Sorceress build here is probably not going to come as a surprise seeing as all the buffs that it receives are uh, the most of the buffs that the Sorceress got and it's the Nova Sorceress, although I do actually prefer a hybrid variant so I would actually max out Nova along with the Synergy's Static Field or the one Synergy Static Field and then Lightning Mastery and because I like Thunderstorm I put one point into Thunderstorm, uh, one point into the one point Wonders, Teleport, uh, Warmth, Frozen Armor and then I actually put the rest of the points into Frozen Orb as well as a few points into Cold Mastery just enough to get just uh, over 100% uh, resistance reduction on it. Now you can actually even still just go pure lightning as well and just put the points you would otherwise put into frozen orb here into say energy shield for some extra survivability and this optimization actually could work really well because if you don't um, use or if you don't put any points into mana you would actually run out of mana really quickly even with the insight rune word on your mercenary so that's sort of the con of the uh, nova sorcerers and the reason that i think it actually requires a little bit of gear to function well although you can definitely still be viable without it um, without say like a griffin's eye or an obedient staff um, on which you can actually spawn plus three nova plus three lightning mastery and plus whatever else and then put the rune ward on top of it which will make it really really strong so you can definitely consider putting points into energy instead of vitality just to have more uh, a higher mana pool which should actually help your mana regeneration base mana regeneration anyway along with the insight um, that would probably be really helpful and also help your survivability with you know energy shield right now having static field being a synergy to Nova is just perfect in my opinion because of sort of the AoE nature of both skills and static field having a great range will help in group play and just for large hordes of monsters as they approach and then once they do get to you you can just spam Nova to sort of wear them down. Now before we move on to spec number one on my list and the build that I'm most likely to try out in season one first, I also want to give a shout out to some honorable mention sorcerer's builds and it's that, uh, remember earlier I said that fire spells, or not fire spells, but fire druid spells um, are no longer sharing the same cooldown and actually the same thing applies to I believe any skill with a casting delay or a cooldown and this includes skills like frozen orb and meteor and firewall and this thus makes certain fire or certain um, hybrid sorceress is even more viable um, despite already being quite strong, right? So like your uh, Orb Waller sorceress, your Meteor sorceress, both received a buff because of this. But those are not the builds I'm going to be trying out first in Season 1. I'm actually going to go for a different build with another, another spell that's been buffed up very significantly and that's Hydra. 
So this skill not only received a street damage buff from its synergies, Fireball and Firebolt, but you can now also cast Hydra repeatedly without a cooldown at all, and you can have up to 6 Hydras. So you can literally, it's sort of like Assassin's Laying Traps, you can just cast 6 Hydras however fast your faster cast rate is, and just have them shoot things, and then just cast your Fireballs, and or Frozen Orb if you're actually spec into it. Again, I like hybrid builds because I like being able to clear lots of different places in the game, but you can definitely opt for a pure Hydra build, by maxing Hydra, Fire Mastery, Fireball, and Fire Bolt. Um, but I currently prefer having max Hydra, max Fire Mastery, and then putting uh, the rest of my points into uh, maxing Frozen Orb, enough points into Cold Mastery, and then the rest into Fire Bolt. Um, but um, you know, you can both go either way depending on what you want to farm, right? If you want to do, say, the Stony Tombs outside of Act 2, like I mentioned before, it doesn't really have any Fire Immune, so you can definitely go pure Hydra for that for a bit of extra efficiency. Plus, you can still farm places like Andario, Mephisto uh, very, very well with this build as well, uh, even without hybridizing into Frozen Orb, right? But again, uh, I'll probably try it with Frozen Orb just because uh, I still think it's quite viable even if I hybridize. And, um, you know, just having Frozen Orb is just such a powerful skill. Uh, and Hydra, even without maxing out all of its synergies, as you can see here, I'm killing Mephisto super quickly, although I am in full tiles. Um, it's so quick that I'm killing him. I'm sure it'll be very, very safe as well. Um, not to mention, you know, viable, you know, even without optimal gear. And, you know, Tile Rasha's itself, another reason that I like hybrid sorcerer specs is that Tile Rasha set is not really that expensive either for the, uh, you know, usually. You know, the armor can be somewhat expensive, but relatively speaking, it's the power level and the magic find bonuses and the survivability that you get from it, especially for hybrid sorcerers, uh, sorceresses, it's just super worth it and super efficient in my opinion. And so those are the top builds I'm most looking forward to trying in Season 1 in Patch 2.4 and also the ones that I think will be quite viable for it as well. Let me know which builds I missed or that you would like to try out that you think would be really good. Um, there are a few that um, are already good and have been buffed up but I haven't really mentioned those because they already are good like the Summon Necro got a buff right and it's already good. The Bone Necro is already quite decent most people think and it also got a buff and so um, anyhow let me know what your thoughts are below. I'll be happy to answer your comments and with that I'll see you in the next video. Peace.